You know, it is, uh, uh, it will be difficult uh, to fit it in, but it is something that, uh, you know, the minister have been mentioning for quite some time, uh, that we need to figure out a way of making it more affordable, you know, for South Africans to travel, you know, uh, their own country. So uh, it is not easy to have a two-tier pricing. Uh, it, it always leaves, you know, uh, others feeling like, uh, you know, they are paying more than the others for the same services. So we're going to have to look at, you know, whether it's feasible to do it, uh, if so, how are we going to do it? And if it's not feasible, then we're going to continue with the price that we have. Yeah. We just need to be very, very careful because we work within the, the, the market economy uh, and where supply and demand, uh, you know, determine how much, uh, you know, goods and services will cost. Precisely. We also know there's no such thing as a free lunch. So I have to ask who effectively would be incurring the costs in a context where there is lower prices specifically for local uh, tourists? Well, you know, the first thing that we have to look at is, you know, how do we construct our prices? We construct our prices based on input costs. Uh, and those input costs are like electricity, you know, your, your, your water prices, your rates and taxes, and also the service that that particular establishment offers. So you cannot go below your input cost or to a point whereby, you know, it's no longer profitable to make business. Uh, that's why, you know, we are in business to make you know, a bit of profit. So, you know, we have to figure out, you know, how to do it, number one, and we're going to figure out, you know, the categories of prices that, you know, needs to be out there. And I'll give you an example. If you look at accommodation sector, you've got five-star hotels that offer five-star services. So therefore, you know, you can't go there and say, you know, we have to discount this price. It will mean that, uh, you know, you're going to have to lower your service standards. And that's not what we want to do because it will have a negative, you know, impact from external or international tourists. They're going to say, well, your five stars are not your five star and your three stars are not your three star. So we have to look holistically and say, you know, from accommodation point of view, we have bed and breakfast up to, you know, five star, deluxe accommodation and so forth and so on. And it's all priced differently. So anyone should be able to afford a vacation at their own price range at the current moment. Mm. So if we go and say we're having two-tier pricing, we've got to be very careful. We've got to look at it very you know, closely. We've got to make sure that it doesn't make us not competitive from the international market point of view. Because if we then say, as an example, let's retain the price that we have for local and let's add 10% for international, is that going to make us competitive? You know, I don't think so. So we, we've got to understand that people have choices. There are many countries that people can travel to. Equally so, South Africans have choices. Many establishments that one can travel to you know, at a different, you know, price point. So I do think that what we have currently is adequate, but we can look into, you know, how this, uh, yeah, you know, policy can be looked at and how it's going to be effective. We, we certainly are open to it, but it's not something that's going to be easy. Yeah, of course. Uh, the status quo in its current form sees most of the income in the sector actually coming from international visitors. If a plan like this does go ahead, do you imagine that being able to finally shift the dial? Well, you know, it, it may. It may shift the dial. You know, if you look at, you know, uh, uh, the, the tourism spend, you know, pre-COVID, you're looking at around 273 billion rand uh, annually, of which 120 billion comes from international tourists. And if you look at how many international tourists we get, you can see that the number is still very small. Now, if you look at the rest of the money, about 153 odd billion, you know, is from local travel. And when I say local travel, it includes government travel and corporate travel and then leisure travel and conferences and many other things. What's happening now is that we don't have government, much of government travel, we don't have much of corporate travel, and there is no existence of conference market. So we are, we are reliant on domestic leisure travel. So from the domestic leisure point of view, one can say, yes, it will move the dial. We have seen this now where many accommodation facilities have decreased their price by 50%, some drop up to 70%, and people are able to travel to places where, you know, otherwise they wouldn't go there. It doesn't mean it's sustainable. It just means that, uh, you know, we want our doors to be open and we want to make sure that people are still employed. From the income point of view and from the profit point of view, there's nothing that we're making from there. So we've got to be careful. We've got to make sure that we protect, you know, these establishments that we have and the reputation that we have, you know, uh, you know, globally in terms of our safari offering, our hotel and so forth and so on. We cannot lower the standards, uh, you know, for the sake of the price. We have to maintain and we have to be more competitive when it comes to international markets. Mm. Reports over the weekend that Brand SA is approaching some kind of crisis. Uh, of course, concerns around COVID-19, the variant first found here at home, certainly compounding that. How much of a concern would that be 
in implementing a system like this? Well, you know, there will be a little bit of, uh, you know, PR nightmare uh, if it's implemented from the trade point of view. So remember, the, the value chain of tourism works in a way that majority of people come from overseas. They come on group tours. The last thing you want is, 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 is those, uh, you know, that are helping us sell the country overseas, you know, sitting there and saying, well, you know, your two price, your two tier pricing is not working. So we're going to have to do a lot of work with the trade to make sure that, you know, this is favorable also for them. So, you know, from the reputation point of view, uh, you know, I don't think that there will be much of reputation damage uh, from, from the pricing point of view. But, you know, as far as brand SA is concerned, I do think that, you know, there's a lot of work that they need to be doing in terms of the variant, in terms of communicating positive messages, you know, around the country, and also explaining, you know, the good work that we've done from the health point of view when it comes to COVID. So there is a little bit of a gap when it comes to that. And that's why we're seeing these restrictions from the U.S. and from the U.K. We need to do a little bit more work there. And we need to make sure that, uh, you know, we are not seeing uh, the way this country is seeing us, because I think it's unfair. And I think we've done a great deal of work in terms of, uh, you know, containing this, uh, this virus. Yeah. I mean, you know, a, a lot of our conversation involves you mentioning how there needs to be a fair amount of caution, a balancing act, if you like. But is there at least a unanimous sentiment that the pricing in the country, at least for local travelers in its current form, is slightly problematic? In my mind, it's not favorable to be in a situation where most of your money is coming from people outside because they find it more affordable to travel in the country. Yeah, look, you, you, you can always have this situation whereby, you know, those that are coming from stronger currencies, you know, they will look at South Africa as an affordable destination. It happens to us when we travel to you know, places like uh, Thailand, you know, we find it more affordable in many other areas. So I think that, you know, from, from our side, you know, let, let's talk about this pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, everyone will say, well, you know, the prices are high, we cannot afford to go to these, you know, certain establishments and so forth and so on. We also got to, 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 to put this in perspective and say, well, you know, within the South African economy, if you are going to go and buy a car, as an example, you go and choose from the range of cars that uh, you know you can afford. Same as in accommodation, you choose from range of accommodation that you can afford. You know, if you want an entry level car, you get an entry level car. You want an entry level accommodation, you can have entry level accommodation. You want a deluxe with all the the, the, the you know things that you want and the champagnes and the everything else that goes with it. You get that, but you pay for that. So you pay for the service that you require, and that's why we're saying that you know. With any budget, it should be able to go on vacation, but you will pay for what you get, just the same way we do when we buy cars. You know, you pay for entry level, you pay for mid-size, you, you pay for big one. It's, it's your choice. But we certainly do have variety of accommodation and variety of attractions and many other things that one can enjoy. You just have to choose what you can afford. All right. Uh, I guess we'll have to see how it all unfolds. One can only hope that everyone wins with whatever outcome we reach. Thanks very much.